Good morning, fellow billionaires. This is Silver5150 with another morning chat for you while I'm off of work for now on Wednesday, July 21st, 2021. Yes, my arms are shaking because I had to move all the stuff to the counter. And I can't take too long because the truck will be here soon to take most of this to depository. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's get in real close here and take a look at everything. We finally organized. Thank God. So guys, I ain't gonna lie. Um, if you saw my video a couple days ago, you know that this stuff was a complete mess. And I actually had to enlist the help of a good friend, Baby Duck, whose organizational skills are galactic in nature and level to come and help me organize this stuff and get it ready to send off to depository. Um, yeah, these guys are kind of like the cable dudes. Um, they say they'll show up in the morning, but they show up whenever they want. And uh, But anyway... We'll get this all gone. So you see this is all here. This stuff is all organized. I'm going to go back through it real quick. As I talked to you um, about the markets. Now, you guys remember the other day I said that it was an orchestrated smackdown of the markets or orchestrated meltdown. You know, somebody corrected me on the word meltdown. They're like, behave yourself. And, you know, I'm right. They're right. Because, you know, the thing is, it's, you know, meltdown is more like 3,000 points, not 900 points. But I think that the central banks and you know different you know entities that control monetary velocity and monetary policy they have to do these liquidations or they have to extinguish some of the fiat cash that's out there or maybe even move it to the overnight lending market to get it out of the system and cool things off a little bit so when they do stuff like that this gives them wiggle room to come back later and have more, you know, ability to smack down the commodities, the precious metals, the monetary metals in particular, because it's, um, you know, important that they keep people from wanting to invest in that too heavily and draw down the physical inventories and then, you know, possibly crash that commodity system because the industrial side needs a lot of copper and silver to function. And I get that. I get that. So I'm not at war with the industrials at all. I only try to stack the sovereign coins and stuff. I don't go after good delivery bars, all right? But these coins, they're out there, these rounds, they're out there because people, you know, want them to have as, you know, a good savings plan. You know, sometimes they just want to have a nice collectible. Aussie Coin Girl, you probably appreciate that. I'll have something else for here, you in a minute here. Um, and then at the same time, you know, um, we are just passionate about the coinage that these people, you know, went through the trouble to make for us. I talked about the man hours and the prospecting and the mining and refining and the minting and the, you know, striking of all these different, you know, offerings and stuff. And we love having this stuff in our stack because we love silver. We know silver's money. We know it'll, what it'll do for us. Um, especially now, you guys, look, you can't deny inflation is happening. Okay, higher inflation. I won't say meta inflation or hyperinflation. That's not here yet. If you want to know more about that, um, take a look at the old Weimar Republic in Germany in 1923. Or recently, you know, as early as late as 2000 in Zimbabwe, and even right now, I think in Argentina, definitely in Venezuela, they're going through a type of hyperinflation where currencies get revalued, not just once, but a handful of times. There's a very good channel out there right now called Star Path Academy that um, has a guy on there who grew up and came up through Romania during all of their different resets, economic resets, and it was a mess. All right. And that's the thing. It's like the resets when they happen, currency resets or credit resets or whatever type of reset they do in Venezuela, they just lop off zeros for their overinflated currency. You lose purchasing power every single time they do that. You, the regular citizen that's out there working, you lose purchasing power every time, you know, the sovereign you know, leaders decide to do that, decide to do a currency reset on their currency and the currency and medium exchange that you use. And so you lose out. Why is that upside down? That shouldn't be upside down. Grumpy horses. Yes. Um, anyway, so this is why I stack as much as I can. All right. Because I think we're going to have more than one reset. And every time the currency resets, you take your hard money, you take your hard Currency. Let me, guys, you got to see these right here. Hang on a second. So these right here, this is something you won't see every day. Let's put these down here. And I got to give special props to the broker for this because he found these. And these are one ounce ultra high relief um, wedge tail eagles from Australia. That's a really bad 
picture. See if we can get a better look at them here. There's one. All right, yes, my hands and arms are shaking because I've been moving all this metal. I know, I know. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. All right, and uh, that's beautiful there. I think that's a 2000, whoa, 2017, 2016, 2017, and this one here I think is a 2018 if I'm not mistaken. I'm sure somebody will correct me on that. But these are one ounce, but they're super thick and fat, and they have their special capsule from the mint. And they're a lot smaller than, say, a one ounce, uh, regular one ounce coin. So there's a regular one ounce coin. There's a wedge tail sitting on top of it, but they're both one ounce. Anyway, neat little fact. Okay. Still shaking, but still talking. Now, moving right along to what I was saying about the markets. I'll go through these boxes in a minute. Um... You know, try to stack as much as you can. I did. I took advantage of every medium I had when the price of silver got low. I told you guys, if you've been watching my channels, you know, I tell stories. I sing songs. I, you know, give my opinions and thoughts on things. But the main thing I did before I even made one single video is I made sure I had skin in the game. And you guys can see I've got skin in the game. Now, how did I do it? Because you're talking to a high school dropout, all right? A high school dropout with no postgraduate education at all. All right, just kind of learning things, going through the world and stuff. But I understood the importance of silver early on when spot price got as low as 13s, okay, bought in the 13s, 14s, 15s, 16s, and on up until like 23, I think. And, uh, and then even here recently, I bought some stuff in the $25 range, and you guys know about that. But what I did at the time is I decided because this was such an opportunity, the one opportunity we'll get in a lifetime that I was just going to go for broke. I was going to take every risk. I, the things I have done would make normal people cringe. Uh, responsible people, they would run for the hills. There's no way in hell they would ever do what I've done. And I've positioned myself in life to be able to take these kind of risks, so I did. So all you're looking at here is a combination of working multiple jobs, working every hour of overtime you can, selling a home and buying silver with it, literally betting the house on silver, and then doubling down and working more and saving more and, and shrinking your life and anything you can think of. Oh, and by the way, the use of every single credit line I can get my hand on. Now, I don't recommend you doing that because credit can be dangerous, but do the math. Find out what you can get away with. Find out what kind of payments you can handle. All right. And I'm not saying go into debt over silver, but I'm going to tell you something. I've done it. You see what's going on here, and I'm managing that debt, and I'm working my way through it. Meanwhile, I am holding the silver. Well, until the truck gets here, at least. All right? But this silver is my physical silver. All right? So this is the end game, guys. I think we're in the bottom of the ninth. And I'm not saying to do anything crazy to get silver, but, like, give you an example about credit. If you're going to buy a home, and right now you're getting a interest rate 30-year fix of 2.9%, which I think is actually pretty normal right now, and you're going to buy a home for $250,000. Consider this. See what your payments would be if you borrowed $300,000. Because a lot of lenders, a lot of banks right now will let you do that because they're pretty desperate to get people to borrow money and spend it. Borrow against a home loan if it's a nice low interest rate, like 2.9%. See if you can expand it beyond the actual principal of the home. Then take that difference and keep some as a cash buffer. And then use the rest to buy yourself some silver or gold, if you like. They're both, you know, pretty good deals right now. I'm not a big gold guy. I've got a little bit of gold. It's buried in one of these boxes somewhere. My gold to silver ratio is probably, you know, one to 10,000 10, or 10 million um, because I have only a few grams of gold. But my point is, is that there are, there's a system out there that is dying to have you um, borrow money from it, cash, let me, correct myself cash currency all right and actually purchase money with that and i know i'm gonna get in trouble for saying that i am on a list of people that are that are being watched i know this because i get my channel just scrubbed and and hacked all the time but that's fine all right i'm not in it for the money as you can see i don't put many ads up anymore it's just there's no point it's more important for me to get the message out to people and inspire you guys to go out and stack you silver apes you silver stackers you silver lovers like we say on the silver spot just go out there, grab what you can at this point. If you see something you like, if you see something really nice that you like, if you like Silver Shield, go ahead and do that. And by the way, whenever I post Silver Shield stuff, I get in a lot of trouble. Like there's a copyright claim and all that stuff. But I mean, I love, you know, um, Chris Wayne's stuff. I hope I don't get in trouble over it. Um, I do uh, stack quite a bit of it. 
So anyway, um, you know, that's just kind of how I roll. I think all silver is beautiful. All silver is great. So I just stack whatever I can. These are triangles, by the way. Yeah, let's see if I can pull one out and not make a mess of things. Okay, these are triangles, by the way. That's a Drayek Dragoon, I think, shipwreck coin. Most of these are Batavias. And uh, the Drayeks are in here, too. Um, but once you start, you know, the, figuring out that you can use the monetary system the way it is right now to stack more silver, you're going to see that it really, really um, can change your positioning with with how things are going right now. Um, will you be able to do this? I don't know. I did most of this at, you know, 14, 15, 16, 17. Um, but you can definitely do some damage. And there's plenty of silver out there to be had. But once you have it, trust me, you're going to be glad you do. Okay, I'm going to have to wrap this up because I know these guys are probably going to show, well, probably not till this afternoon. We'll see. Anyway, so let's go through these boxes real quick. Um, I'm not going to look at everything. I'm just going to tell you what's going on with these boxes. So, of course, this is a box of kilos. You guys have seen this. I've got videos on it. You can watch it anytime you want. See everything that's in the box because I've got them all laid out. You actually just did that recently. You just saw a couple of days ago. This is my Canada tube box. And there are tubes of Canadian Supermans. And the... Uh, the um, Year of the Dog, Dog Privy, uh, Maple Leafs, the Frosted Ones. In fact, Florida Stacker had one on his channel. Check it out. Great show uh, he put on the other day, and he had a uh, one of those uh, Frosted uh, Maple Leaf Dogs on there. Um, you know, and check out the other channels, too. Silver Game of Thrones, Silver Joker, um, International Stacker. There's too many names to mention. Fred Gara right now, he's got the Secret Silver Stacking Society channel going on there, which is a take on something we all coined back, you know, when stacking was a lot uh, easier to do. All right, um, real quick. So this right here, of course, is my Mexico box. You guys have seen this. I've got all of my Libertad stuff in there. Got some kilos down there. Got a bunch of two ounces, five ounces, one ounce tubes. Um, just go on and on. I think it's around 500 ounces. I have no shame in telling people what I have. Um, I'm not going to keep it around here. Uh, very long but the thing about it is is that i found out in the silver community a long time ago people that are into this they're generally great people they're not into being you know um you know uh doing bad things they they're not you know they're not thieves per se of their mind they want sound money they want justice they want financial justice so they don't think in terms of how they can get over on somebody or take their stuff I know there's people out there that will do that, and for that I have probably about as much lead as I have silver, to be honest with you. Anyway, not the point. This right here is the Asia box. Asia, Asian coins. I've got pandas. I've got South Korea. I've got um, other Chinese stuff, Chinese restrikes. The dragon order reek strikes, but I also got some random rounds in here because I just need to fill the space. I didn't have enough capsulized um, Asia coins to fill the box so i put some random rounds in here okay so there's john wick and of course some christmas rounds and some um jm bullion rounds and stuff sunshine minting sunshine minting makes the planchettes for the american silver eagle so when the mint tells us that they don't have the silver to make eagles well um did they call sunshine that's my question anyway um here we have um far eastern tubes so i've got pandas in here i've got everything from um uh, Australia in here so everything is over in the Far East you know um, like I said you know the people down under Aussie coin girl four nines fine silver check out their channels you get a chance um, I got that in there I've got those um, South Korean Tigers the three ounces I showed you the other day uh, some Canis rounds some Chiwu rounds some Laos Tigers all these things I've had on my show at some point if you want to check out the channel just go back and backtrack and look at some of the stuff we talk about the coins and all that this here is my African tube box, African tubes. I've got Congo water buffaloes. I've got, um, you know, I mean, these are the big ones, the three ounces. I've got the, you know, St. Helena's. These are islands around the African continent. Cougarons and Chad coins and meerkats and, and all that stuff from Rwanda. Very good stuff. Of course, you know, these are the um, PF69 Ultra Cameo, uh, five ounce koalas. That the broker got for me back when they were like 135 bucks a piece. Nobody wanted them, and now they're going to run you about twice that if you want to get them. You buy low, and you either hold forever, like I'm probably going to do. My descendants, you know, my my nieces and nephews, they're going to be well off because you know, I'm basically going to hand off a lot of stuff to them. But I'm going to use whatever I can to travel. This is a mini monster box. It holds show on this back in 2020, I believe, or 2019, um, when I bought this. 
and uh, it tells you all about it. All right, but yeah. So this silver, man, this is to, for us in the silver stacking society, we're going to party our asses off. Yes, we are. Going to maybe charter a boat, have some poker tournaments, have golf tournaments. We're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. We're going to live the silver lifestyle. We're going to film it so everybody can see it because everybody's had a chance to prepare for it, to be in it. And if you're not getting into it, you're going to miss out on all the fun, guys. We're going to be sailing. We're going to be playing golf. We're going to be at poker tournaments down in Vegas. We're going to have conventions. We're going to do all kinds of stuff, charity events and stuff for the kids. It's going to be great, all right, because we're going to have silver wealth up the wazoo as a silver society. All right, that's the whole point. The whole point is to stack the stuff. Back to the boxes. What else we got here? This here is the random round box of tubes, okay? Got John Wicks in here. I've got some um, Engelhart Prospectors, some uh, um, Intaglio Mint Molin Labe, Stagecoach rounds, which are the ones that split in four, U.S. Assay rounds, all that stuff. Got those in here. These right here are just plus size coins, okay? Oh, Monkey King. I haven't seen a Monkey King in forever. I used to do shows on him all the time because he is the party animal. Guys, I'm telling you, the silver lifestyle, when things clear up, and things get better and the economy finally turns around and, you know, and we go through the bad parts and stuff like that. Like Robert Kiyosaki says, it's going to be good again. And at that time, we're going to be partying like the Monkey King, for real. I've got stuff from Russia. This is a Russian um, sterling silver coin, five ounces, and it is a proof. All right, Mongolian eagles, 10-ounce Mongolian eagles. Um, from there, of course, the uh, South Korean tigers. These are all 10 ounces right here. Five ounce, 10 ounce. Five ounces, okay, and then these ten ounces. This is the Saint George um, slays the dragon British coin, the Valiant, and underneath that is all of the ten ounce uh, Queen's Beast coins um, that I have. And I don't have the whole set. Uh, Silver Joker does. I don't. Got some Geiger ten ounce bars. Next up is the um, we're going to call this the Rush, the um, sorry European box. So in here, I've got, you know, um, St. Helena stuff. I've got um, these Philharmonics here, different years, 2015, 2009, 8, 11. Um, Britannia's in the plain tops. I've got Queen's Beast coins that I got. I told you about these guys. They were scruffy. Nobody wanted them back a couple of years ago. I loaded the boat on those simply because I love the designs, and I don't care if they're scruffy. I plan on using this currency. Currency, I'm going to spend it in a prospective countries. If you don't think... Countries that are having trouble with their currencies and they want to have some backing, they're not going to ask for you to use their sovereign minted coins in their land and exchange you for whatever currency they have for the day so you can go and do stuff and have access in that country. I think that's a huge miss. Nobody's talking about this. Wait till it happens. I'll bring it back up when it happens. All right. Back to the boxes. This here is going to be the European capsule box. So European coins, I've got Ukraine in here, I've got Russia, all right, in here. I've got the Czech Republic, Czech Lions, okay. Gibraltar, you guys seen the show me and Silver Joker did on those. And of course, Britannia's and Philharmonics are all in that box right there. Um, this box right here is actually a mix. So I've got Germania in here. So you guys see Germania here, we got some of the allegories. All right, allegories right there. We got the oak leaves. This is not the special blister. These are regular oak leaves in here. But we got some Chad Rhinos. And we've got, of course, the mandrills, which I did a show on because I really loaded up on those. I got 1% of the strike of these mandrills. They're 15,000 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. I got 150 of them. All right, and I plan on using those, hopefully, in the Congo, where they're from, uh, you know, or somewhere on the African coast. Um, of course, you know, Congo gorillas. Got those. And if you guys haven't seen... My show where I talk about the Kilo Gorillas I have for 2017, which are just bigger versions of these, it's in the library. And, of course, Congo um, coins. These are the blue whales. Let's see if I can get a better look at that. Okay. And that's number two in the series of World Wildlife. And, of course, the giraffes, which are number one for the series of World Wildlife. All right. There's that. And, of course, some Somali elephants. And we've got plenty of... Uh, well, ooh, Chad Scorpions, you know, the leopards from also from Somalia. These are Ghana leopards right here. And that one's actually kind of graphic. I like that one. Where he's eating the antelope. You can see the horns there under his feet. And, of course, Rwanda. I've got buffaloes and hippos. All right. Enough of that. 
these right here are some more kilos all right and that is going to be my panda proof kilo um, from china and of course the czech lion and i've got some other stuff down here uh, i'm trying to figure out but it's, it's collectible stuff don't have time to go through all of it um, in here, I also have some collectibles in here. I've got some proof eagles. I've got some graded eagles. I've got silver joker, uh, silver train bars, which are freaking awesome. All right. I've got some uh, proofs from uh, Solomon Islands. And of course, the, um, what do you call it? The Blackbeard coins are in here. I've even got some like Avengers uh, base metal coins from the movies. All right. As you guys know, these are the triangular coins, the shipwreck coins, all right, from... Australia and then here is my fractional box okay and fractional box and then you guys have seen this I've got you know the stagecoach fractional rounds I've got various types of capsulized uh, tenthers and stuff and then of course the Valcambies which I'm very fond of I've got slabs of those uh, for days and then the Canadian uh, equivalent of that I've got bricks of the tenthers okay Somalia from you know all over the place and then of course my half ounce chiwus and half ounce um, Libertad's that I keep in here just for a quick grab. And there is the bag of the Loose Val Cambies, which, you know, I plan to use in a pub or someplace where I want to get a flagon of ale or a haunch of meat. So that is uh, very cool. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's go ahead and wind this down. So, of course, this is my box of eagles that I showed you guys here recently. And uh, in these ones, they say SD Bullion on them. These are the 2021 um, Type 2 Eagles. Me and a broker will do a show on that this weekend. Okay, and we'll talk about those and some other things going on in the economy. He works for a retailer and told me today the emptiness of the shelves in the place he's working at is really scaring the crap out of him. He sent me some footage. Ugly, guys. Ugly. Not saying supply chain disruptions are bad. Just saying uh, they're real. Okay, and they're going to continue to exacerbate. Here we have the bar box. Silver bars. One ounce bars. We've got some kilo nuggets in there, of course, from um, Tombstone. Uh, what's that? Scottsdale Mint. Arizona Tombstone, I've got this low mintage, uh, well, not low mintage, but low serial number kilo bar I got from Florida Stacker. I traded him some Krakens for this. Um, we've got various types of bars. Samurais, which I think are from, I can't remember what mint they're from, but Silver Game of Thrones turned me on to those. I've got the Britannias that I got from Silver Joker. I've got the Johnson Matthew bars that I bought a while back after the broker found them for me. And then here, we're going to move on to... Um, what is going to be my Canada box? Actually, that's not true. This is going to be North America because we've got all kinds of stuff in here. We've got Libertad's, all right? We've got Canada coinage in here. And we've even got some American Silver Eagles, okay, in here. But we also have some random rounds, okay? And these are, you know, U.S. assay office. They're as close as damn it to a sovereign minted coin for the United States. But they're historical, 1980, Hunt Brothers, uh, you know, confiscation, and then these coins, these uh, rounds come out, you know, after all this silver goes back into the strategic silver reserve, if I'm not mistaken. And then, of course, some stuff, uh, prospector, um, provident prospectors, and, you know, we have all kinds of, uh, was it trade units? These are trade units and stuff. And then, of course, the 1.5 ounce um, wildlife coins from the Royal Canadian Mint. All right, and getting towards the end here, we have um, what I like to call my far east box this is the australia box with a little bit of the islands and stuff so i've got islands in here you know various things i got um the tree of life in here i've got some east indian company trade units lionfish uh iguanas um the um antiqua and barabuda <laughs> um coins these ship coins here for the rum runners okay very cool and then of course um what do you have the uh Samoan seahorses, you've got flying fish, I can't remember from where, and then of course the marble coins, which are all Toluvian, okay, from the Toluvian Mint for the movies. Okay, Brumby horses, very, very beautiful coin, underrated. Um, the Royal Australian Mint, you got the Aussie Sharks, okay. Back to the future coins, all right, with Doc Brown and Marty McFly, okay. And of course the, uh, let me make sure I get this right. This is um, under the Southern Sky, beneath the Southern Sky coins uh, from Australia. Luna snakes, which have a very odd size, and in fact, I just went ahead and put them next to my silver shield stuff, which I hope I don't get a copyright claim on. Um, and then, of course, the funnel web spiders, the the Apollo tribute coins, the Tokelau, 
butterflies, which actually have writing on them. And I did a show about those, so if you guys want to see that, you can just go back into the library and see the shows. Why is this panda sitting here like this? Because I know I only got one of them. Oh, and that's, of course, my kook. And then I guess these are, oh, and then some other coins, too, that are, well, rounds that are pretty cool. All right, guys, so I think that's going to do it. I've talked for 25 minutes. Hopefully, you stayed with me the entire time. But just to show you now, um, we're all organized thanks to subscriber Baby Duck. Came by, helped me out, one of the people close in my circle, and um, got this stuff already. I'm going to go ahead and pop the lids back on them and get everything lined up for when the truck gets here and send most of the stuff off. However, however, I will be keeping my fractional box with me. Got to have that, okay? My collectibles, which I'll keep, okay? And then I think I'm going to hold on to these eagles right here. And that's really all I need to have, just those three boxes to survive any kind of, you know, unexpected calamity in the financial system. All this other stuff can uh, head on over to the depository and sit there and collect dust in the most beautiful way possible. All right, guys, this is Silver 5150 telling you guys that your stack is not whacking at just 20 ounces to your name. You don't have to do all this. Just start with 20 ounces. It's like five-minute abs. It'll pick up on its own. Trust me. Once you feel it and see it, you'll be passionate about it, and you'll start buying more. And that just 20 ounces to your name, like I was saying, keeps you 99% ahead of the game. And the game is afoot, guys. The game is afoot. All right? If you like this kind of content, please share it, okay, with the Silver Apes out there, Wall Street Silver. I got songs on there, all kinds of stuff on the channel. Feel free to go check all that stuff out. Subscribe if you like what you see, all right? And then comment like you guys did yesterday. We had some great comments yesterday. I really, really enjoyed it. So I am uh, here for you until I have to go back to work, and then I'll probably be on freaking uh, a disappearing act because work is so busy right now. Anyway, enough chit-chat. Thank you for joining me today. Keep an eye on the markets. I think we're going to have a snapback rally in metals at some point. We're having a snapback rally and everything else, which tells you that it was orchestrated on Monday. All right, guys. Have a great day. Go out there. If you're hot, stay cool. If you're cool, stay hot. And we'll talk to you next time.